Some people are even asking, is college worth it? To answer this question, I sat down with Rich DeMillo, director of the Center for 21st Century Universities at Georgia Tech, to explore the value proposition of a college education. In the last few years in particular, it seems, this conversation about return on investment college value has really come into the fore. Sure. Um, what would you say are the primary reasons for that, and, and what is the conversation right now? Well, you know, the, price, the price part of the equation has been pretty noticeable. If you, if you look at the, at the national polling that's taking place on this, parents are, are concerned about the price of college. They're concerned that, that, that the investment that they're making uh, in higher education is going to be going to be repaid. A generation ago, two generations ago, yeah. when when public education was free or pretty close to to free, those questions I think didn't have as much traction. But now, you see tuition going up at twice the rate of inflation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, student debt going through the roof. A lot of coverage in the national media about whether or not. The debt is going to be covered by by uh, by income, right. uh, and so you know I just think it's on everyone's everyone's mind. I, I think part of the big message here is how quickly uh, uh, top-rated institutions have pivoted on this on this question mm -hmm. and made significant investments. Not only Georgia Tech, but our, our our peers and our competitors. One of the things you hear a lot about is assessing value of a particular major, you know, as much as it may be a particular college. So. What's your take, and I think also maybe your uh, advice to a family as they're sitting down and considering college and they're looking not only maybe at the particular place, but what the student would actually study? That seems to be one of the driving, the driving factors. If you're dealing with an institution that, that, that can't explain what skills you're going to learn, then, then that's not a good sign for what's going to happen post post-graduation. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you have to be in computer science. It doesn't mean you have to be in an engineering discipline or something that has a very specific vocational component to it. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I would be, if I were a parent, I would be wary of an institution that can't explain exactly what is going to be learned in the classroom. Mm -hmm. When you think a little bit about uh, generations and the conversations now that parents are having with their students, and you alluded to this earlier, um, the conversation really has changed from maybe how a um, current parent went about choosing and selecting a college to now their son or daughter is doing that. Uh, what's your uh, perspective and how would you help uh, a family have that conversation in a really healthy, logical way? Students talk to each other a lot. You know, the, the power of social media is that, is that they compare notes and they compare notes about, about, uh, about institutions. And the, the power of a brand, which has always been the thing that carried institutions through you know, tough times, right. up times, down, down times, the power of the brand, I think, is fading into these questions that we were talking about a few, few minutes ago. Um, what am I going to learn in sure. the classroom? What, what is the value of this, of this degree? Yeah. What has happened to other graduates of this, of this institution? So there's a set of questions that... Um, they're not the kind of questions that U.S. News and World Report is going to is going to ask. They're really they're really questions about about you know what have I gotten out of this four year this four year experience? What is a reasonable amount of debt? You know what, in your opinion, is a good way to go about saying, here's what it's going to cost. Here's to the best of our ability what we believe this will lead to. How do you even start to process the gut feel of 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 accruing a total amount of debt that's bigger than your expected first year income strikes me as a bad idea. Okay. Uh, so, so if an institution is going to require me to put um, you know, on my credit cards and in, in, in a, in a, a, a non-subsidized loan uh, that, amount of, that amount of money, I'm going to want to know down the line, do I have a feasible way of, of, okay. of repaying that? Okay. And and you see student after student that just that just accrues two, three, four, five, ten times mm -hmm. that that amount. And you know that at ten times annual income, it's going to be very difficult to repay those loans. Okay. Shifting gears a little bit, going back to just this conversation surrounding value and uh, and return on investment, um, a family uh, has you know gone through this admission process. They've applied. A student has been admitted to. Uh, several schools, including uh, one or two of those being just elite institutions that have a big brand behind them and highly selective. Um, 
as you look at that and thinking about uh, advice to, to families in this regard, uh, what would you say about the importance of making that choice, especially if it means incurring a sizable amount of debt? So it's a hard proposition to resist, right? If you, if you get accepted by an elite in institution, uh, most families are going to look at that and say, well, that is a leg up for my son, son or daughter that's going to stay with them their whole life. And it's probably true. It, it's, it's probably true that, that they get an advantage out of, out of going to an Ivy League institution or to a Georgia Tech uh, or, a, or any other highly ranked institution. It turns out, though, that the data shows that it's not the deciding advantage. Uh, for, it, for example, it matters less where you go to school than the places that you applied. You know, this, this is a piece of, piece of, of, of economic data uh, that is not widely known among, among parents. But it turns out that, that if you have a son or a daughter with high aspirations, regardless of which place they go to, if they do well, they're going to do well in, sure. in, in later, later life. So, so things, things like your familiarity with, with the quality of institutions, your aspirations, how well you do once you get to an, an institution, right. those turn out to be the deciding, mm-hmm. deciding mm-hmm. factors. Mm-hmm. What would be your advice to students, too, once they do arrive on campus about some of the things that they can do during their college career uh, to set them up for finishing? Because uh, to your point, it's not always necessarily even just about where you graduate from, what diploma you hang on your wall, but the experiences that you're building, the exposure that you have, the network, et cetera, during your time. So what do you acquiring, say? Acquiring skills. You know, th- th- this, this, is, this is all about, regardless of what happens in the classroom, acquiring a set of skills that are, that are going to carry you going, going forward. Okay. I, have, I have a son who spent his, his entire undergraduate career interning for newspapers. Uh, it almost didn't matter what he majored uh, in because when he graduated from, from college, yeah. he was a seasoned journalist. He was a seasoned, uh, a seasoned professional and, and had an advantage over almost everyone else that was coming, uh, coming out of college. Uh, someone who, who comes to a place like Georgia Tech and takes advantage uh, of, our, of our entrepreneurial programs or walks down the street to General Assembly uh, and takes some courses or participates in the startup activities on campus is going to have that body of knowledge to rely on regardless of what, they, uh, of what they study. In conclusion, just coming back to kind of that initial question of is college worth it? And with all of the implications surrounding that question, uh, how do you respond? Well, th- the data is, is, is really clear that, that, that there is still a premium for, for a college degree. Uh, your, your chances of, uh, of doing well financially, professionally, uh, in, in later life uh, are enhanced by a factor of two or three uh, if you persist in college to, um, to get a, a degree. Um, that being said, it matters how well you do. Uh, so an, an, an average an average student uh, who who kind of coasts through through a program that's not very challenging is going to do less well uh, than someone who takes a challenging program and does extremely uh, extremely well um, and 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 that's always that's always the balance that you that you have to strike if you if you know that you're going to require these skills when you graduate you should be be uh, as a student focusing on acquiring those skills in the most efficient way uh, possible. Um, if you uh, if you try to slide through on that, it's not going to serve you well mm-hmm. later on. Great. Great. Thank you. Again. Thank you again. Great. Thank you.